years old or 75 years old with grade 2 disease and the data suggests that she would benefit from some sort of adjuvant radiation treatment whether vaginal brachytherapy or, like, like, or radiation in general. And the surgeon usually say, well, she is an old lady, uh, can we skip radiation treatment? She'll be fine, don't worry about it. And the question is, yes, she has risk of recurrence, could be about 15% based on Portec 1 study and GOG study. If she's accepting a risk of 15%, the answer from the surgeon, well, if she develop recurrence, if she's among the 15% that she develop recurrence, <laughs> if she's among the 15 percent who develop recurrence, we can easily take care of this patient and salvage the recurrence with further surgery or further radiation or further chemotherapy and should be cured. And I said, well, we have a study to compare the results after salvage radiation treatments or not, or advocate. Of course, there is no study in the literature. But because we have one of the large databases in the country, I think our database now is about 2,500 women with individual cancer, we were able to query the data and find women who had radiation treatments adjuvantly, and women who had recurrence within the pelvic area, and the recurrence was managed with radiation treatments. And we were able to kind of come up with two groups, Matched, matched phase two, uh, grade tumor intervention type of surgery. And we clearly found that those who had pelvic recurrence are doing worse than those who have adjunct current. This is common sense, but we were able to kind of show it uh, when you compare apple to apple. <coughs> and this was published, I think, early last year. So if you have a recurrence, the best way to prevent it is to do adjuvant radiation whenever indicated. And as, the, as Dr. Gerard and Dr. Zikia <coughs> mentioned, brachytherapy is becoming a very important tool, very highly performance treatment, very easy on the patient. Patient actually asking me, are you doing radiation on me because I feel nothing? Yeah, you can feel nothing after radiation treatment with brachytherapy. So it is a very good treatment to, uh, to consider to prevent any recurrence. So this is a study I was mentioning. And again, when you look at survival outcome between a very matched group of women who had recurrence and received radiation to the pelvic, whether vaginal cuff recurrence or pelvic recurrence, and similar exact group of women who got adjuvant radiation treatments up front, there is huge difference in outcome between the two groups. This is the adjuvant, this is the salvage, adjuvant salvage. So we concluded that it's better to prevent recurrence by recommending adjuvant whenever indicated. So that's number one. So we have to prevent recurrence by recommending adjuvant if needed. So let's assume someone developed a recurrence today. What we do? Then we do the typical workup for these patients, make sure we confirm the recurrence by biopsy if indicated or if feasible. Do the staging workup. Sometimes we do PET scan. Sometimes it's not approved by our insurance, but in general consider some sort of imaging, whether CT scan or MRI or PET scan, and biopsy recurrence sites whenever feasible. So the groups of women that might be seeing you for recurrence could be following in this category. A group of women where you have to consider cure. You are treating the patient, aiming for a cure, not for palliation. Or a group of women where you are intervening just to kind of palliate a symptom, especially for those women with metastatic disease in the liver or the lung, and to control sometimes symptoms for severe vaginal bleeding. So this is palliation, and this will cure. And the group for cure, you have to consider previous form of radiation that was delivered before. So you have a group of women who received no adjuvant radiation before. Let's say a stage 1A, grade 1. The recurrence rate is not zero in this group of patients. They still could recur about 4 or 5% of the time. So if someone recurred in this group, you are going for a cure. For another group of women who had radiation treatment before, 
and then develop another recurrence despite the radiation treatments. So you have to look at the size of the recurrence. If the recurrence is within the irradiated field or recurrence outside of the radiation field. And this is what we're gonna cover hopefully today quickly, if the slides are working so far. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. So the group of women that you are going for cure is a group that did not have adjuvant radiation treatment before, after their history. So salvage radiation treatment in this group is the way to go. Again, while talking about recurrence, not with a static disease, recurrence within the vaginal cuff and or the pelvic. Sometimes people add the paraiotic area at the site of <coughs> disease that you can go for cure. But we have to focus mainly on the most likely sites for recurrent endometrial cancer. So as I mentioned, radiation treatment should be considered and can provide a very good cure for this woman. Certain circumstances, if you have a very small, small tumor, very superficial in the vaginal vault, sometimes surgical resection with a negative margin could be achieved. But because of this intervention are very, very real, rarely utilized, um, it is not considered a standard of care. But you may come across a patient who had resection of vaginal cuff recurrence coming to you for radiation after that. I think the literature is very poor when it comes to data supporting surgery resection alone in this scenario, but typically we see this patient with or without surgical resection. So, you have to keep in mind the difference in prognosis for those who had vaginal recurrence in the vaginal vault compared to those who had vaginal recurrence in the pelvic area. All the data, including our studies, showing that if you have a tumor in the vaginal vault, the outcome is much, much better compared to women with pelvic recurrence. Simply because pelvic recurrence could harbor more systemic disease later on but vaginal cuff recurrence is very, very effectively managed with radiation treatment alone. And the size of recurrent, the size of the tumor is also important. Smaller recurrences, women can do better for, compared to larger recurrences. Histological features, if the recurrence is endometrial carcinoma compared to serous carcinoma, again, the outcome is hugely different. So let's start with adulated vaginal cuff recurrence. A woman, when you do a staging workup and you see nothing at all, nothing in the lung, nothing in the liver, nothing in the pelvic, but on the exam there is only a single lesion in the vaginal vault, you do the biopsy and it's confirming vaginal cuff recurrence, similar to the histological diagnosis of initial disease, like endometrial carcinoma. So, portic studies show that this woman can be cured, again, I mean it cured, almost 86, 87% of the time. But again, it may not show a survival benefit down the road because as I mentioned in my first presentation, this woman typically die from non-individual cancer. But if you wanna make sure this cancer is cancer-free from individual cancer, radiation treatment is very, very effective. How about pelvic concentration? Very rarely utilized. It may only be used for someone who had previous radiation treatments, but for someone who had no radiation treatment before, vaginal cuff irradiation is the way to go. Again, we will talk more about the technique and the dose, whether you add external beam or not, but radiation treatment is a very good option in this population. And as I mentioned, you can cure as many as 88, 90% of the patient with this approach. So, how we approach this patient? If you have a very, very small superficial disease in the vaginal cuff, can brachytherapy alone do the work? Simple answer might be, uh, you can deliver a high dose of radiation, different fractionation, you're prescribing to five millimeter depth using uh, high dose rate or low dose rate or uh, electron radiation treatment, electronic, but at the end of the day, you can definitely cure this patient. But most of the approaches used by Portic study, Portic 1 study, and many, many studies, including ours, show a slightly better outcome if you do pelvic radiation treatments followed by vaginal cuff radiation. 
So in our approach, we do pelvic radiation treatment first to 45 grade, covering the entire pelvis, and then boost the vagina cuff with vagina cuff brachytherapy. But again, you can argue that vagina brachytherapy could be a good treatment alone for a very small, very um, uh, superficial tumor, especially if after surgical resection, we may consider vagina cuff alone. But typically, our recommendation is for pelvic radiation treatment to 45 gray followed by uh, vagina cuff brachytherapy. The question is, vagina cuff brachytherapy, as Dr. Professor Gerard mentioned, could be intracavitary with cylinder, could be interstitial. How we decide that? Well, after external beam radiation treatment, we do typically repeat the MRI, physical examination, and decide what would be the residual size of the disease after external beam radiation treatment. If the disease is basically gone, I mean, there's no tumor anymore, then, then vaginal brachytherapy alone is a uh, boost, is very effective using intracavitary cylinder applicator. But if the tumor residual is still large, maybe two centimeter or one centimeter, vaginal cuff radiation using cylinder is not an appropriate method of boost. Then we have to use the interstitial brachytherapy, taking the patient to OR, implant the patient, and add the required dose to take care of this disease. And if we use uh, interstitial implant, uh, we typically ask the G1 oncologist to be with us in the operating room to guide the tip of the needle to avoid any uh, perforation to the nearby, a small bowel, and so on. So we use laparoscopically guided interstitial implant to put needles around the tumor with margin to, develop, to deliver the dose required. If we do 45 gray external beam, we might have to deliver another 30, 35 uh, gray using interstitial implant. And we're using the American Brachytherapy Guidelines for recurrent doses. So we do about 45 gray external beam and then uh, four fractions each with 60 gray to deliver the total dose is about 76 uh, gray. Of course, smaller tumor might require lower doses, higher, bigger tumor might require bigger doses. But generally, this is uh, the whole part of doses used for recurrent individual cancer at the vessel cuff. We, we use a uh, cylinder technique, as I mentioned. So we use uh, what are called shielded cylinders. So if the recurrence, for example, is in one area, there is no need to irritate the entire circumference of the vagina to take care of this tumor in this area. So we can block 25% of the cylinder dose, can block 50%, can block 75%. So basically, you can remove you can remove the blocks completely and irradiate the entire circumference of the vagina, or you can irradiate 25% or 50%, 75% or 100%. We use it routinely to kind of tailor and customize the radiation dose. And as I mentioned, if the recurrence is only localized in a small area, there is no need to irradiate the entire vaginal circumference. You already cover that with external beam. And what you need to do, the boost is very conformal to the area that you are going after. Uh, the dose of radiation, as I mentioned, based with the American Brachytherapy Society, is assuming that you did not, the patient did not receive any previous radiation before, and we're trying to aim at 70 grade plus. <coughs> Running out of that, I guess my lucky day. Um, so we try to do the uh, 70 gray plus, 78 gray on an average, but uh, if you can safely deliver about 80 gray for the recurrent site using the combination of external beam and brachytherapy, that might be a good dose to do this. So how about if we have pelvic recurrence, someone who never had radiation before from endometrial cancer and then she developed a single or two lymph nodes within the pelvic area. Our management is the same, we're doing pelvic radiation treatments, uh, and then we use high dose to kind of boost this lymph node. The question is, pelvic boost might be challenging, or challenging because you have a small bowel, you have the bladder, rectal, sigmoid, sigmoid a small bowel, all might be surrounding these lymph nodes. So to go for 80 gray to this lymph node boost might be very, very risky and might be very, very dangerous. So you have to consider the anatomy of the patient to deliver the dose required but typically we do, on an average, about uh, 65 to 66 gray to boost the lymph nodes. 
And again, the outcome for pelvic recurrence is lower than, I'm sorry, worse than vaginal cup recurrence. How about paraortic recurrence? Again, you still can cure these patients. Again, you are going up, so you end up with lower tolerance to radiation fields. So in the pelvic, you may have the rectum, the bladder, where you can take higher dose of radiation. But when you go up in the abdomen, you have the duodenum, the small bowel, that might be very, very sensitive to radiation treatment. So the dose usually drop from 6, 6 gray to something like 54 or even maybe sometimes 60 gray if you can do that safely. But we do image guidance, guidance for this treatment because you have to make sure if the lymph node is smaller, you may re-simulate this patient to kind of change the, the, the expansion, change your plan to kind of save more small bowel. While moving to the more challenging scenario, which is someone who had radiation treatments and then developed recurrence. Why challenging? Simply because the dose of radiation might be restricted. You don't have the freedom of recommending any dose you want. You don't have the freedom of recommending the treatment you want or technique or modality you want. You are what's called your hands are tied. So basically you have to come up with a way of delivering a reasonable dose, but in a safety uh, manner. So the first scenario is someone with vaginal cuff recurrence who had initially pelvic radiation treatments. In my mind, this is a very easy and very favorable scenario because brachytherapy, as everyone today is confirming, is an easy treatment, very highly conformal, and basically, basically uh, spare the surrounding normal tissue. So if someone develops vaginal cuff recurrence after pelvic radiation treatment, it might be challenging, but not a huge challenge. We can deliver dose <coughs> that we need, and we can cure this patient still. But the other way around is a difficult one. Someone got vaginal cuff recurrence, and then develop pelvic recurrence. Well, I'm sorry, vaginal cuff recurrence initially, and then develop uh, pelvic recurrence again, <coughs> despite the vaginal brachytherapy. But remember, this is very, very rare. If you look at portic data, those who had vaginal cuff recurrence and had radiation before, the rate of recurrence is 1.8%. So we're talking about 2% of the population. So what do we do with this situation? Again, can you do resection? Might be, but this might require upper vaginectomy or excentration. Can you do re-irradiation with bracket therapy? Yes, but you have to look at the initial dose and the size of the tumor and see whether you can add more dose or not but it's very, very challenging. So just to highlight a fact that um, if you had someone who had pelvic radiation before and then develop a pelvic recurrence, then it might be very, very limited dose you have in your hand to deliver. So we're talking about 60, 70 gray, but if the patient already got 45 gray to start with, you are limited to use only 30 or 40 gray, and you have to use highly conformal radiation treatment for this recurrence. What I mean by highly conformal treatment, if you have proton, proton might be working well. If you do not, then use IMRT with a very narrow margin, what was stereostatic body irradiation, if you can do that to deliver the dose you want. Okay, why, why it is controversial? Because if you are basically sending the patient to the surgeon, the surgeon first approach well would be basically exenteration. I want to take this patient to the OR and do upper vaginectomy and or pelvic lymph node dissection or exenteration and so on. But this is a very, very morbid procedure for patients. So that's why it's important to consider the tumor board discussion and very good counseling the patient about the options, side effects, and whether or not the patient will accept one way or not, because there's no standard of care. I cannot claim that my approach would be better than the surgeon's approach. There's no study to show that one is better than the other. So we have to rely on open discussion with the patient and making the patient aware of all side effects. How about toxicity? It is not a good service for our patient if you do re-irradiation 
and then the patient ended up with extensive morbidity from small bowel perforation and rectal bleeding, colostomy bags, diverting urinary function, and so on. So it's very important to counsel the patient upfront. This is a side effect that might happen if I do the radiation for the second time to the same site. Is it contraindication to do irradiation? No. You can still do re-irradiation, but we have to discuss that with the patient. That, yes, we can buy a cure, we can make you cancer free, but this might result in a colostomy, for example. And the rate of colostomy could be 20%. If the patient accepts that, then you can go ahead and do radiation, re-irradiation, if needed. Distant metastasis. Again, there's a category of distant metastasis that everyone may be familiar with. It's called oligometastatic disease. If you have a full-blown metastatic disease, tumor in the lung, liver, bones, that's different from someone with a single lung lesion or a single liver lesion or a single bone lesion. The burden of the disease is different. You can expect that someone with single liver lesion or single bone lesion might do better than someone with multiple metastases all over the body. So it's important that to tailor treatment accordingly. Of course, everyone will get systemic therapy, but the outcome and expectation for survival might be slightly different in this oligometastatic disease. And as a radiation oncologist, for someone with oligometastatic disease, with chemotherapy, we might employ stereotactic body irradiation to a single liver lesion, or a single brain lesion, or a single lung lesion, to kind of prolong the survival in these patients. Sometimes we recommend uh, progestin therapy. So our pathologists stain the tumors for endometrial cancer for ER staining and PR staining. And if the expression of PR, ER is strong, then progestins might be a good uh, treatment for these women if needed, if the expression is strong. Um, so this is an important part because we see that a lot, because we, we see a lot of referral from endometrial cancer to our center. Sometimes if the patient develops paraortic adenopathy and no visceral metastasis, no lung, no liver, no bones, sometimes the surgeon can go in and do further lymph node dissection in the paraortic area or pelvic area, followed by systemic therapy if needed. Again, this is very, very selected cases, and you have to uh, make sure the patient is ready to undergo surgery and healthy and fit to go for surgery, and then she should receive systemic chemotherapy afterwards. There is no role for radiation treatment. Unless the surgeon leaves some residual disease behind, then you can do a very small focal radiation field to the pelvic or paraortic area if needed. Of course, palliation is very important. So when you have a recurrent cancer, and there's no way to cure this patient, you can consider palliation, make the patient pain-free um, if she's having some pain. If she's bleeding, whether uh, hemopsis from lung metastasis or vaginal bleeding from pelvic metastasis, you can cure this patient, I'm sorry, uh, control the symptoms by a small field, high dose of radiation to kind of palliate the symptoms. All depends on the case if we should have radiation before or not radiation before, so we have to pull up. But again, maybe if the patient had radiation before, four gray times five fraction to a very small area might be reasonable to stop the bleeding. We were able to put this together in a guidelines for American College of Radiology last year, I think, and I was fortunate enough to lead the group for these guidelines. So in conclusion, women with uh, recurrent endometrial cancer uh, can be cured, and you have to spend all the time and effort hoping to cure these patients from their current disease. Um, we did not talk about chemotherapy in the radiation treatment salvage uh, uh, mode. So everything I mentioned is radiation alone for stage one and two recurrent disease. But currently there's a study ongoing except, uh, discussing the impact of cisplatin with radiation in the recurrent setting. The study is still enrolling and the results might be available in two, three years. But it might be promising to combine cisplatin chemotherapy and adjuvant pelvic radiation in the current endometrial cancer. But so far, as of today, there is no data to show that chemotherapy is needed combined with radiation in this setting. Uh, systemic chemotherapy must be considered for those with metastatic disease, 
uh, serous carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma, and we'll typically use couple band and taxol chemotherapy. <coughs> Thanks for your attention.